Okay, so we're here now to look at the frequency response analyzer feature of the Cleverscope unit. Now, if you, if you order the Cleverscope with the isolated signal generator, um, then that's all the hardware that you need to be able to use the FRA application uh, exactly how it's supposed to be used. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is, is take a little bit of time to look at the FRA control panel itself. And you know that's this part right here on, on the left side of the screen. And <clears throat> just it does look a little dawning at the very beginning, but I want to point out two things. One is is that there's very detailed help screens that are available if you look at every one of these areas on the control panel there's a little blue help button right here and behind there there's all kinds of text to read I, I would uh, highly suggest strongly suggest to read all of the help functions before you get into it but <clears throat> the other thing the other aspect of this is that Cleverscope on their own website have many good videos about how to use not only the all the other aspects of the Cleverscope but the FRA in particular. The Cleverscope seems to be very interested in characterizing power supply designs and so I'm not going to uh, do anything extra with power supplies but I'm just going to look at some components because one of the things I am found very revealing and fascinating about this is that if you know if you buy components like you know just passive components like resistors caps and inductors and you get a data sheet you get a certain amount of information about that it usually consists of maybe just one frequency point or maybe no information about frequencies at all um, or quality factors anything else dissipation factor you get one value what the Cleverscope FRA does is it gives you all of that information across the bandwidth of interest. So you're trying to design some kind of an analog system or some filters or things, something like that, and you've got a certain bandwidth that you're interested in. So you can set up the FRA to sweep across that bandwidth of interest and give you the full picture of what the component is actually doing. The other thing that we'll demonstrate later is that you can develop a family of curves on the spectrum analyzer portion of this so that you can see how a bunch of the same type of component are all working. You can get an idea of the variance of the specification and also how the whole group of them is performing. So um, it's, it's really very interesting to see all of that stuff. So let's take a look, closer look at the FRA control panel itself anyway. Um, it has a number of blocks in it, signal generator, uh, the options block, an amplitude table, um, impedance LC, frequency analysis, and actions. And then there's another box down here that is kind of a status indicator as to what is going on with the whole system when you do things. What, what I would do is that I would start with the, with the help button right here in actions and go up and work my way clockwise around this whole thing to learn about what's going on. I'll just bring up one, one of the help here, how to get started. That's why you should start with the actions. Look at everything that's in here and it gives you all the basics about the FRA and, and how to actually work it. Okay, then the next one similarly has big help screen here that needs to be read. Then the same thing for the amplitude table. And the, the two most important parts, I think, on this after you get through with this down here is the signal generator part, the setup for that, and the options. What each of these different LED buttons does when you activate them. Then over here on the impedance LC part, this is related to your frequency analysis block right here. Because if I change things here, then it's also going to change other parameters here. There's also different circuits, that, different ways you can connect up your devices that you want to test. There's three different circuits, A, B, and C. And they're, they're all slightly different, 
they make big differences in, in the results that you get. So make sure that what you're actually doing with your, your test jig is exactly what's going on here in this circuit. Then over here, of course, you can, if you want to test capacitors or inductors, you can choose which type of test results you want to see. Quality factors or dissipation, um, ser the, the um, equivalent series resistance and so forth like that. Now, notice that in the frequency analysis part down here, there's a whole host of acquisition or analysis types right here. There's impedance, phase, conductance, shunt impedance. There's two different calibration procedures, one for just probes and another one to uh, calibrate another device called the CS1070 uh, unit here. That is uh, another uh, CleverScope product. And then actually there's a third type, which is if you build your own test fixture, you can calibrate it using this procedure here. Then it goes on to power supply unit gain phase, power supply rejection ratio, and output impedance, input impedance, etc. RMS amplitude. So there's a whole host of different tests that are available just in the frequency analysis block. And of course, they're all explained underneath the help menu here. Um, amplitude table is when, if you want to actually specify dis discrete frequencies and amplitudes as your test is performed, you can read all about that here in this help menu right here. Okay? So, um, as I've mentioned, um, it's quite comprehensive, and the setup here needs to be considered very carefully to make sure that you get the results that you want to have.